things to talk about self-determination theory. And um, when it was brought up, I immediately mentioned that this is probably one of the um, most robust theories of motivation, especially as it relates to learning. And so why don't we spend a couple of minutes or a little bit of time going through what that theory is and, and think about practical applications for education, learning, um, perhaps online learning versus traditional classrooms and, and see if we can come up with a discussion around how this can be applied or some of the limitations around this, this theory and its, and its practice. One of the important questions I think that might be worth us spending some time on is first asking what is motivation? Um, and if you think about the origins of, of this, of the query into this question, you kind of are taken back to the time of Skinner and the Skinner's box where uh, these primates were placed into a box and their behavior was observed by giving them either reward or some sort of punishment. This was probably the, the most straightforward uh, and undisputed uh, form of motivation. And essentially motivation was categorized as anything that causes us to, to be moved to act. Uh, and as I mentioned, the early thinking about, about this was that if, uh, if it's either reward or punishment, then that's basically all there is, that you either have more or less motivation as a singular dimensional concept um, and that can be sort of reinforced through uh, reward or punishment. However, as we've been thinking about the more nuanced understanding of motivation, we recognized an important limitation to these early models, specifically that people may not want to stay in the box, right? As you're thinking about getting people to engage in certain behaviors, that they have uh, the freedom and the choice to uh, respond and to act in certain ways. And even when they are, for instance, students physically in a classroom, they can cognitively check out. They can cognitively sort of stop paying attention. And so again, it's this question and this recognition that motivation is a little bit more nuanced along multiple dimensions. And essentially, the two dimensions that have been thought about are what are the uh, factors that motivate uh, forced compliance versus what are the factors that motivate uh, uh, it's sort of intrinsic or voluntary behavior. So this notion of volition has become extremely salient and central to the study of, uh, of motivation. So the big question then is given a choice, how do we motivate people to act Volitionally, how do we get them to want to do the things that we want them to do with with their minds, with their um, with their focus, with their interests in a way that that is meaningful and sustainable? The origins uh, of self determination theory were essentially designed to answer that question: How do we find out the conditions or the factors that impact intrinsic motivation or volition? Uh, and essentially. <clears throat> what intrinsic motivation can be described as is anytime we are doing something for the interest of doing that thing and not necessarily for the external forces that might compel us to to do so so not for the reward or not for the punishment uh, and uh, as sort of an offshoot of this line of research the researchers primarily um, uh, Edward DC and, and, and Richard Ryan have uh, figured out that not only have they come up with a model that predicts behavior and, and predicts motivation, but they've also found that many of the same conditions or factors that predict volitional behavior are also the ones that in the end up being strongly correlated with well-being. And so this kind of led to the evolution of thinking about what are the factors of in, uh, intrinsic motivation to what are the needs that we have um, that help us to fl flourish. Now, one of the assumptions that these researchers have is that we're all essentially initially designed to want to grow and learn and flourish. The important distinction there is that that doesn't happen automatically, but there are some conditions in which you can come to flourish and learn more effectively. 
Um, but the base understanding is that when you first start off, that you do want to learn to grow and learn, um, engage, you're curious, you're keen, you want to ask questions, you want to understand the world. That's kind of the pre-programming that we were, um, were born with. But something happens along the way that's important to understand as well. The terminology that's often used when talking about um, sort of self-determination theory is this use of the word needs. As I mentioned, the theory has evolved to think about not just the factors that promote behavior, but also the factors that are correlated with well-being that end up being the, the satisfaction of primal needs. It, and when we talk about needs, it's important to distinguish needs from desires or wants. I may want to buy a really fast, expensive sports car or a motorcycle uh, or a, a cottage in Florida, uh, but that's not necessarily a, a need. And where that's important, that distinction is if one of my needs are not met, then there's a sort of a disruption to functioning, that I can't really f function on a day-to-day -day basis because I am um, distracted or feeling frustrated uh, by one of the things that I know I, I need to be fulfilled and I need to be sustained with. Omid, can I jump in with a question? Yeah, please. Um, so this was one of the points that I think the article clarified it for me, but um, so self-determination theory is not claiming these are needs for survival per se, just for fulfillment and well-being, right? That's how they're framing the word. Okay. Yeah. And where that's important is that, again, where a need is frustrated or not met, <clears throat> there is this disruption of functioning. Like you feel like something is missing um, or that there's a void uh, that needs to be filled. And so that actually prevents you from going about your business or fully engaging with the domains that you're interested in. And so when one of your primal needs is not met, um, not only is your well-being frustrated, but so is your functioning because this underlying need is, is motivating you to figure out how you can refill or f fulfill that need. Cool. Yeah. 